Hi guys, welcome back to the Audacity podcast. It's your girl, Team Maria Shanti. If you don't know now, you know, and I am here with... Jahil Johnson. Come that on. is it. Okay, so who are you and what do you do and what are you doing on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Jahil Johnson. I'm a food business owner. I'm an internet or social media food content creator. So I showcase my cooking, my skills. And I just teach people how to cook, really. Hey, guys, the reason why I actually got him on the podcast is because I can't lie. I've been seeing the TikToks, the food, the Instagram. And I know that there's a lot of girls out there that actually don't have a man that can cook. You know, it's very attractive. Like, is that was that your main focus to get more girls on you? Or was it a thing where you just wanted to showcase your talent? Uh, it was more, <laughs> do you know what it's like? from like 13, 14, I've always loved cooking. Like mm. I see my mum on a Saturday, just mm. obviously buy all the ingredients from a supermarket. Mm. See her prepping it, marinating the chicken, X, Y, Z. And then <laughs> on the Sunday, she just obviously, I'm Caribbean, Jamaican. So I just see mm. her just listening to music, just vibing, just cooking, whatever. And in the evening, obviously we'll come and eat it. Mm. And just seeing everybody just coming downstairs, just eating the food, loving, I'm just like, it just looks lit. I'm mm. just like, you get me? Yeah. So, <laughs> I it's just definitely said, like yeah. a good feeling because it's like you're cooking and people are actually enjoying the food like i know that when i'm cooking like i can tell you i'm not as good as you but i know when it comes to pasta like i can make a good pasta i know it sounds so basic but some people can't even make like beans on toast <laughs> mm, nah, you know what's funny i actually bought you something oh. off my food menu okay food menu yeah. okay Got creamy Cajun shrimp pasta. Okay, okay. And a creamy coleslaw for you as well. So okay, guys, we're gonna try some of this now, <laughs> um, because I'm a greedy girl. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually gonna rate this. Give me your honest opinion, constructive criticism, whatever you get. So yeah. as I'm eating this, can you explain to the people like how you made this? Like, what was the ingredients? What was the inspiration behind this? Because this is just such like a unique dish. Like, not anyone can just chef it up. So yeah. explain to the people why I'm trying this. Yeah, so we got creamy Cajun shrimp pasta um, with my homemade sauce that I've made. It's with a lot of spice blends. Got my Caribbean side, got the all purpose, the paprikas, the cayenne peppers, the complete season. <laughs> you name it. Like, okay. You get me. And obviously that's just all marinated in my um, the shrimp. And I made a sauce, combined the two, mix it in with the pasta, toss it up. And you just get that first of tantalizing flavors. You get me? Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, this is nice. Okay, let me try the prawns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you done this dish on MasterChef, mm -hmm. which I saw. Um, how do you feel about how it went with like making it, like the judges and stuff like that? You know what? It was crazy because it's like what you might think is your bread and butter when you're in that um, those scenes and. You're being criticized by the judges. People be saying five, 10 minutes left. You got all the contestants around the world. I mean, all the contestants obviously cooking. You got people around the world. It gets a bit nervous, but as long as you're just good at keeping your head, just knowing that it's just you making food, doing what you love, like you just get locked in and it just tends to disappear. After a while, you're just like, you're just doing it and you're just, you're loving it, you know? Mm, and this comes to the, you made from scratch. From scratch, of course. <laughs> Like with MasterChef and everything like that, what was the experience being on TV, being a young black male being on TV, come with the Caribbean culture, being different? Like what was what was that like for you? It was all overwhelming because I'm just used to pre-recording my videos in my kitchen and just obviously making it and editing it and just showcasing it on social media. But with MasterChef, Again, I didn't apply. I got scouted. So someone, again, saw me on the social media and mm -hmm. it was invited. I was a bit overwhelmed. I was just like, me just cooking in my kitchen to millions of people watching me. It's a bit of a jump, do you know what mm. I mean? So I was a bit scared, obviously. Shout out my brother. He was just saying, yeah, just do it. Do you get it? Like, mm. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can't really miss that out. So yeah, I went on it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a... I would say if I could describe it in one word, it would be a roller coaster. Like mm. you just have ups and downs, mm. highs and lows. Like you get the rush and then you're one minute, you're happy. The next minute, you don't know if you're going to make it. Like yeah. it is, it's a whole different scene compared to just cooking in your kitchen. You mm. And I think like going from, yeah, as you said, like 
cooking in your kitchen, you know, no one's watching you, seeing what you're doing. And of course, when you're around professionals, they're like people that they literally know. So it's like when you're around them and you're sort of bringing in your own style, sometimes they can be very like not open to like opinions or not open to how you might do things. Or for example, how you might add certain seasonings or how you might, you know, cook certain things first. Like everyone has like, their own sort of niche and that must have been quite hard as well like meeting people that just have one opinion yeah, yeah, and just being yeah. like no just trust the process yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's a lot it's a lot but again with experience and everything you tend to get more comfortable like mm -hmm. in the industry i've been doing this since september 2021 mm -hmm. so just over just under two and a half years so, so you've been cooking for two and a half years or was on you... social media but oh. i would say so I've got the passion from about 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I've been cooking since September 2021. I would say predominantly cooking would be around a few years ago. Yeah, probably like 2018, 2017-ish. So have you ever had like your guy friends like come to you like, listen, like me and my girl are going out or me and my girl are doing something. Like I beg, can you cook for me? And then I can just say it was me that cooked it. Have you ever had like a situation like that? I haven't had that, you know, but yeah. I've had had my friends obviously saying, yep, yeah, it's Valentine's Day or mm. it's Christmas or it's my birthday. Can you just mm. come and cook? And I'll just, you get me, get the candles on and mm. maybe the roses, have some music, some piano playing. Yeah. Like you get me? <laughs> just depending what, what you enjoy. And I'm more of like, I, I like the melodic vibes of, of course. obviously making sure that everybody's comfortable. Everyone's just yeah. nice and you get it. Like, yeah, that's yeah. The vibe that I'm on. What was the thing in you that was like the trigger point? Like, no, I need to do this. This is what I'm trying to do. You know what? I feel like touching on mental health, like especially with social media, you'll get trolls every now and again, just obviously just doing what they're doing, just chatting rubbish. But again, like one one thing I do is just self-improvement, just making sure I'm looking after myself. If it's not mentally or physically, it's just just making sure I'm taking care of myself. So if it's not going to the gym, mm. if it's not reading, if it's just not doing something to improve myself every single day, then it's not on my mind you know yeah what I mean? that's a good way to think i guess that's it's like at the mm. end of the day people will always have their opinion people will like have their view and whatever but if you just know okay i'm going to the gym somebody can say something that you don't believe in but obviously the more people say you're gonna be down yourself is that true xyz but mm. if you know you're actually working yourself every single day on grinding of um i don't know posting content or reading or going to the gym or just improving yourself financially yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. then you just know that regardless what somebody says it doesn't matter because you know you're working to become a better version of yourself, of yourself every day yeah. you get. so have you ever like along your journey like have you ever had to sort of cut off people for not seeing your vision or did you have to yeah like kind of just push people away because they didn't really have faith in you or they said you know you can't do it you know what i feel like Especially when you start a business, it shows the true people around Especially you. when it comes to money. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I feel like when you just start to do things that it might be out of the ordinary, like social media or starting your food business or whatever, it shows people's character. Because yeah. somebody can claim they're not your um, that, that they're your friends, mm. but have you put any support in my business? At all. It doesn't even have to be you buying food. You could have all. reposted something. You For free. For free. Anything. You could even drop me a message every now and again. For free. <laughs> I love I love what you're doing. Like, I'm proud of it. Keep it up. Do you get it? If you're not doing anything like that to, like, you're showing me that you care about me or my yeah. business or anything. You ca I can't classify no. you as a friend. Not at all. Because at all. To, to repost something is for free. To share something. To share a link is a free. It's for free. You know, like, to message someone. Oh, how are you yeah. doing? You know, like, stuff like that. Like, it's for free. Literally, like... You even messaging me for this interview, you know, for this podcast. Like, it's literally all things that you guys can literally do for free to make yourself useful. I saw Tia Marie start this podcast and I was just like, how can I not <laughs> show support? How can I not show love? Yeah. It's not putting my face out there, giving her energy. Literally. 
I was doing some snooping around, trying to look for these MasterChef clips because I was like, I need to see you in action. Like, I need to see you on TV. Like, I can't lie. Like, when I'm watching the TikToks and stuff like that, it's mainly just you, like, showing the food and stuff like that. And it's like, are you really the one that's actually, like, making these dishes? Like, I need to really know. So I have a bit of a clip from the episode um, that you done. Um, so we're going to watch it together. Um, I'm gonna see your reaction. Okay, I wonder which one it is. <laughs> so I literally just like went on the series and just like looked for the clip. So let's have a reaction to it. The parmesan was a really nice touch as well. I like the use of the Caribbean seasonings. I can really taste it on the prawns and it's coming through on the sauce as well. For me, this is a dish that you go to a resort in the Caribbean and anyone can order. This is a beach happy style thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> you was grinning to you. <laughs> the whole feeling of making something for someone to enjoy it and loving it, it just warmed my heart. Real shit. Looking back at that video, you know, how old was you then? Was that last year or the year before? Yeah, before I was 20. Okay, you was 20, so now you're 22. 22. So looking back at, you know, the 20 year old you, what would you say to him before the judges tried that food? Mm. Whatever doubts and pressure you have in your mind and all the overthinking, just scrap it, just lock in, do what you're doing, do what you do best and just try and go for it, you know? Mm. All you can really do in the end is just try your best. Yeah. And I know I have the capability of doing it. But yeah. But sometimes when you overthink and you're in your mind, you kind of lose yourself, you know? But mm -hmm. as long as you just lock in and you just say, yeah, I got this, like, you good. Yeah. Get me? There's a few things obviously people don't see like that. Like what? Tell us. Um, <laughs> what are we not seeing? <laughs> um, like behind the scenes, like, what is it like? Like when you're in the kitchen and when it's like that time or like everyone's under pressure, like, what is it really like? Is there cameras following you around? Like, what's going on? So, like, one thing that I experienced, obviously, and all the other contestants, is like, when you're at home watching, you don't see the amount of cameras there. Like, I swear to you, there's like 30 cameras at the top. Obviously, you see me from a bird's eye view. There's like 20 um, producers and directors and all the people. And then there's just like these big, big tripods. Then there's this guy right in your face just on his knees, pause. <laughs> and he's just literally just recording you like that. And I'm just like, bro, like, I'm trying to cut you. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? <laughs> sort of having someone right there or cameras on you, knowing like, cool, if I grab the wrong spice, if I grab the wrong... <laughs> like, what was that like? Scary. Like, And that's what it makes you overthink. Like, should I do this or should I do that? Because next thing you do something wrong that you didn't plan on doing and then mm. everything's just messy. Like, for example, there was a scene I had on my pizza scene mm -hmm. where obviously... I done the pizza, it went a bit wrong. Mm. One oh yeah, I just see that clip. <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> but I didn't want to put on the podcast, guys, because I know you're like sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> but, but um it Yeah, happens. like like there was um yeah. there was some the camera, like obviously it's content, they want content. Of course. So like when I'm I'm guided, I'm just like, oh, oh. one camera guy pushed me out the way, he was just like and then obviously to get the footage, like yeah. you didn't care about me, you didn't care about no. us being you get me, obviously. Damn, the 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 motivation sentence like what what would it be mm, i'd probably say <laughs> <laughs> probably say enjoy the journey i feel mm. like everybody's fixated on the destination that they forget to enjoy what's actually happening like mm -hmm. enjoy the trials and errors enjoy um i don't know you could have started social media and let's say someone's fixated on views and mm. you feel like you poured your heart and soul into something mm. and it's not banging the way you think. Enjoy that because mm. when you actually get to where you want to go, yeah, you appreciate it more. Mm. I feel like this generation, they're very fixated on instant gratification. Mm. They don't want delayed gratification. They don't want the the years and years of struggle. No, they, they don't. Want, they just they see everything. the top. Yeah, like yeah. even a lot of yeah, a lot of businesses, a lot of podcasts, a lot of shows, a lot of different things. Everyone starts from somewhere. You know, yeah. it's not just gonna be an instant boom. But I think. I found your social media because mm. there was one time, guys, <laughs> as I said before, I'm I'm a okay cook. I'm not everybody. Let's come. Let's no, 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 no. <laughs> I can cook my bolognese, a few things. But um, there was one day I was searching for things to cook and um, your like TikTok came on That's a lot. And, literally. That's and then a lot. I was just like raw, like he's from London. 
it's a guy cooking like he's jamaican like everything he's cooking there's somewhat a jamaican spice going in there like literally oh, you get me. <laughs> literally <laughs> and you just do the you do the um the menus and just all the dishes like you just do it so simple like it just made makes it look simple but i'm tasting the food like it's not like that tastes like restaurant food. Like it's even better. Like it's so nice, and I can tell that you actually put your, you know, heart into it. I appreciate um, that. So yeah. So another topic I wanted to touch on was um, you obviously mentioned your mom, and like you know how your mom sort of taught you to cook. Like, what's the influence that your mom has had, and also what like what's so important about your relationship with your mom as well that's what i want to know i would say me and my mom we locked in you mm-hmm. get me like my whole family like i'm very close to them i'm very family oriented um i would say yeah me and her are very close like you'll get to a point like we be cooking for example and we both know what we're doing but it's just like should we go my way or yeah, mom's way you get me you get me <laughs> but again it's all love you yeah. get me right, cool so the first I would say question. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to say, if I was a starter, a main, because I'm the main, period, mm-hmm. and a dessert, what would I be? So let's first start with a star. We'll talk about that in the main, then the dessert. <laughs> I'll probably say jerk chicken. Mm. I feel like with you, um, obviously, presentation-wise, that's what's going to grab the attention of someone going to eat it. Um, it's nice. And obviously, <laughs> um it is have flavors like when obviously jerk chicken if you cook it correctly you know you're marinating xyz so you're getting the flavors you're getting the spices you're getting the different type of if it's crunchy taste do you know what i mean mm. so i feel like yeah you're good, yeah. You're good <laughs> cool if i was a dessert what would i be uh i don't want to say this because it brings back to master chef but i would say you're a chocolate fondant okay I feel like obviously there's more to you than meets the eye. I feel like when obviously you cut into the chocolate for the yeah, riz, yeah. guys, you hear this riz? <laughs> but yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. It just kind of showcases you, like it shows. I feel like you're you're a person that the more you get to know you, um, obviously you show a bit more. So that's a chocolate for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Riz, riz, riz. <laughs> Start up. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Um, what could be a, a piece of lettuce? <laughs> let's say shrimp skewers. Okay. You know, you got the different type of like flavors, and obviously the shrimp. You got, yeah, I'll say shrimp skewers. I love, I love shrimp. I love prawns. Mm-hmm. I love seafood. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like seafood is very hard to cook yeah, actually yeah, can turn to like a lot of other like meats and steaks and stuff like that yeah. i'm trying to speak food vocabulary terminology guys yeah. so anyway but like seafood is really hard to cook have you ever cooked anything like crab yeah cooked crab before. or like lobster I haven't cooked it. i haven't tasted it yet. okay really sounds how come crazy, it sounds crazy i don't know there's so much it's Caribbean crazy. food that you could do with lobster day. No, you're completely right. Literally. <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> you know, with me, it's just like, I have a I have a comfortable factor. So it's like, if I know I'm no. good at making something. I'm going to make I'll that. I'll make it. It's bad yeah. because it's good and it's bad. Obviously, yeah. it's good because I can perfect whatever I like making. Mm-hmm. Like chicken, for example. Mm-hmm. But seafood, like maybe a lobster that I've never made, I might be a bit reluctant to obviously make it because I've never made it before. Mm. I don't know how to, but that's that's bad of me. Like I want to tap into the seafood a bit more. You know what I'm saying? So the next video we're gonna look at is the curry chicken. You guys know I just love my Caribbean roots. I have to just see what this is about. <laughs> Just hear the seasoning, like mm. Jamaicans don't play, you know. It's peak. That's crazy. Every single time you finish doing a dish, you just do that little. Yeah, dun, 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 that's dun, what dun, the food makes me do. You get me? Literally, I love your pain. <laughs> Um, yeah, your page is looking really sick. You know, I'm really proud of you. Um, and I just hope that you just continue to do what you're doing and don't stop. And, you know, do take 
all those opportunities that you can like even with this you can start doing weddings catering for weddings would you ever start your own like recipe book yeah no, I'll do i was literally that. thinking like, about yeah. that just now like is that something you'd want to do yeah no it's definitely something to do in the near future um i do have a few things coming up i have started catering events as well so if you have any christenings or yeah weddings or even if you have your boo and you get me you want to treat her nice whatever you <laughs> hide me out and i just come through and i just make sure the nice is memorable you get sick so where can the people find you um you can find me on my instagram jahil johnson dot underscore um tiktok jahil johnson and snap jahil j official jahil johnson it's just such a flowy name <laughs> and yeah for the food um i do monday to thursday um you just look at the menu you let me know what you want to order then friday and saturday or saturday um, obviously, I'll just make it in the afternoon, then come deliver it to you straight away. Sick. So I'm based in Southwest. Exactly. Um, so if we're in North, you better order a week before. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're in uh, if you're in North, I do collections again. Mm. Like I can meet you like halfway or whatever. Yeah. But I'm more or less based in South. Mm. Um, it's free within free delivery within a three mile radius. Mm. Um, but yeah, if it's I don't know London Bridge or somewhere like maybe it's four or five miles, like I'll still do it. But um, there is just a delivery fee you get. Yeah, that's nothing crazy. Yeah, not crazy. nothing crazy. Just a little fifty pound in there. <laughs> <laughs> just a plane ticket. <laughs> yeah, plane ticket. Well, before we end, I always love to end the podcast with a prayer. Um, would you feel comfortable doing it, or would you want me to do it? I want you to do it. Okay. <laughs> <You're> like, I'm <laughs> dying. <laughs> <you> <laughs> so All right, cool. Um, you sure? Yeah, is there cool. anything you want me to add in? Forever hold your peace. Uh, no, we good. <laughs> Close your eyes. Let's hold our hands together. Lord, thank you for actually getting us to this moment in 2024. Lord, I'm so grateful to be here with such an incredible, talented young man. Jahil is just such a good spirit and just such a vibe to be around lord and i just pray that you protect him at all costs lord i pray that whatever he does he does it with a hundred percent effort lord i pray that everyone that is around him every single person his mom everyone who has inspired him lord i pray that they just continue to just um give him good vibes and to just continue to support him lord because you know that he has a talent lord that so many young people can look at this and they can actually try for themselves and they can actually contact him and and that he can teach them the ways of his trials and tribulations lord to where he actually to how he got to where he is lord so i pray lord that you just guide us keep us strong keep us away from any negative energy from last year lord and please lord can you just give jahil the tools this 2024 for his business to really really go the way that he wants it to go lord in jesus precious name we love you you're amazing lord amen yeah. <laughs> Yay! thank you guys for watching this podcast